want to just show you um, a couple of my kids, mostly because they think they're famous at this point. And I always tell this story about when I, when I was Teacher of the Year, and um, <laughs> my kindergartners were so excited that I was going to get to go meet Barack Obama. But it's hard to pronounce Barack Obama when you're five years old. And so that little boy that asked me what I was going to ask um, rock your mama when I got there. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't think I got it. He, he knows that story. But um, I just want to show you this video because this is um, a group of third graders. So I'm not sure which class. That would be in Ireland, but they're about eight or nine years old. And this is this year. So I'm, I've left Arizona. I've moved to Colorado just in January, and these kiddos are with their teacher where we've been kind of trying out these strategies since they were in kindergarten. So they've had three years of no one telling them how to solve a problem, but a lot of talking about when they say, well, here's how I thought, then we compare the math. You know, we give them the equation. Well, this is the equation that just happened in your head. Or here is some of the thinking, connecting it to the concepts rather than starting with the concepts first. So you'll, um, this problem, no, no pencils, no cheater pantsing. No, that one didn't sit either, huh? You know what cheater pants is? Somebody who cheats. You get it? So the noun is a cheater pants, the verb is cheater pantsing. Okay, so Samantha bought two cases of soda for $13.42 total. If she pays with a $50 bill, how much change will she receive? Okay, so, you know, I could subtract, right? I could add, I can do, I can solve it however I want. There isn't, there isn't really one way to go about this problem. So here's how this group of this group of kiddos did it. She's pretty quiet. She's a pretty shy little little one. But Samantha Soda Pop bought two cases of soda for thirteen dollars and forty two cents total. If she paid with a fifty dollar bill, how much change did she receive? Let's do that. So we can start with Fifty dollars minus thirteen dollars and forty two cents equals blank. And then thirteen dollars thirteen dollars and forty two cents plus blank equals fifty dollars. And to do that we, we did we did thirteen dollars um and forty two cents and then we did and then we did two plus eight we did two right here, and then we added eight, so then it could give us to the next ten. So then we got $13.50. So to get to the next dollar, we added 50, cent, 50 cents. Then we got to $14. To $14. So then we went. So then four always goes with six to go to the next number. So. We got six dollars, and then we got to twenty dollars, and then and then we added thirty dollars, so then it could go to fifty cents because twenty plus thirty—that's fifty. And then what did you get for your final answer? So then for our final answer, we added all these up, and we, and got, we got thirty-six dollars and fifty-eight cents. So I share that video because these, um, these kiddos are struggling in math, and their scores would probably show that they're in what we call the novice range in math. And that's, that's because if they were given a subtraction problem with the $50 on the top and the $13.42 and, and on the bottom, they're going to have some procedural errors because it's really hard to subtract with zeros. We all know that. <laughs> I don't, well, maybe not for you, but I'm going to speak for myself here. But they're doing algebra, and they don't even know they're doing algebra. So we're starting to let them kind of comprehend what they're doing. And then now when I connect the concept to it and I let them know it's algebra and we start to put an X in that equation, it all of a sudden makes more sense to them on a level where they understand what it means to make a friendly number. They understand that we're not, everything's not a ones place the way that an algorithm makes it seem. So when they do get to the algorithm, there's some comprehension behind it. So it's, it's fun to watch kids that are at a really low level solve something because they just kind of have the freedom and a big sheet of paper to figure it out. So these little girls are doing this problem where these little girls are, they're, they're not struggling as much. They're starting to understand things. So they have a totally different story problem they're doing the same day. But I'm going to let you figure this one out first, okay? 
You paying attention? All right, we'll wake him up here. I think the tea and coffee should have come, you know, throughout. <laughs> because apparently in Ireland, you drink tea and coffee all day. So if you stop drinking it, then it would start to go to sleep. All right, so Jonathan, who's a juice maker, bought a bag of oranges for $2.34. Got it? Oh, the answer's up there. Look at that. I was going to make you solve it. Now you don't have to. Um, and they bought a bag of lemons for $3.45 and paid ten with a $10 bill. So how much change is that? So you can obviously figure out how much the total cost was. So how much change is that? Put your calculators away. Some of you have it? OK. So you probably didn't put a 10 on the top and put the number underneath and start crossing numbers off in your head. Am I, am I making a correct assumption? So that's one way I can go about it. It's not saying that I have anything against algorithms where we can have a family meal together and I won't argue with them. But I think that what they do for kids is they pull the thinking away from them because they're just trying to follow the steps. They're just trying to decide what to do. So these little girls have gone about it in a way that we actually tell kids is wrong. They've decided they want to start with the dollars in the front. Jonathan the cheese maker bought a bag of oranges for $2.34. Jonathan the cheese maker bought a bag of oranges for $2.34. And a bag of lemons for $3.45. If she paid with a $10 bill, how much change did she receive? Um, if you combine the lemons and the oranges together, you, you can get the right bill. So first, I added the dollars first, $2 and $3, and I got $5. And then we combined um, $0.30 cents plus $0.40 cents equals $0.70. Cents. And then we added $0.04 cents plus $0.05, cents, and we got $0.09. Cents. And so the answer was $5.79. So what we did down here is we made a number line and then we, we, we made it so it was even and then we got $5.80. Um, what do you mean you made it so it was even? What did you Well, add? we had $5.79 and then we plused one cents and it equals $5.80. Okay. And then we, we did plus 20 cents, which got us to $6.00. And then if you plus four more dollars, it got us to ten dollars. And then the answer was four dollars and twenty-one cents. So it's kind of fun to watch eight and nine-year-olds that are able to be flexible in their thinking. They're able to explain their thinking that's there. They're able to, in a group, talk without having the teacher question them through it. And it took years to get there. We weren't able to just go in and in one or two lessons get our kids to that point. But by allowing them to be collaborative every day and asking them to talk more than we talk, by giving them problems and letting them just kind of figure it out, whichever way works for them, and then getting together and having a little congress and deciding, looking at all the strategies and deciding which one works the best, has started to create kids that are challenging one another, which is what mathematicians do, right? Somebody de develops a, a theorem or a proof, and then they look at it with other people, and then they decide, you know, do they agree, do they disagree, and they argue kind of back and forth about it. So we want our kids to do the same thing. And I know change is hard. I know that, you know, there's, there, I mean, there's a history, not just in Ireland, but in the United States, in every country, of the way in which math has been taught. Well, it, it works for some of our population. But we want something better for our kids than what we had. And if some of our kids are getting it, it's not enough. Because every single child that's in a school today deserves the opportunity to be able to understand numbers and to be able to understand how to problem solve and think flexibly. So I want to leave you with um, a note that was found in a library book after I left Arizona. Um, it wasn't signed, which 
and saddens me and also kind of um, inspires me at the same time. So I'm not sure who, the, what this, who this kiddo is, but I think it represents the whole point of just starting the discussion. So we may not know what to do from here, but at least we know we need to start a discussion about how can we, whether I have the privilege of being in the classroom in front of the kids, or whether I have the privilege of supporting that important work, how can we start a conversation to support teachers and kids in learning math in a way that they can be confident? So I thank you for sitting for as long as you did just to listen for a few minutes to something that's happening um, that is hard work that I know that um, many of you have probably felt the same way. And as you read that, think that, wow, that is a great thing. And at the same time, what a sad, sad letter to know that that is a feeling that's out there still for kids today, and it hasn't changed. So I, I applaud you for being willing to come and listen to the conversation. And what I applaud you for me even more is the work you do when you step outside of this room to start supporting the growth of that conversation. Thank you very much.